Hi, I'm Larry Stewart with 4constructionpros.com and I'm at IQ 2011 here in Louisville in the Vermeer booth with John Kyers, product manager for underground equipment for, for Vermeer. John, the PD-10 is a pretty unique piece of equipment. Why don't you tell us about what it does and how Vermeer got into this business? Sure. The PD-10 is a, a machine that's designed for the installation of solar piers and primarily in large utility scale and large commercial solar arrays. If you can imagine 100 acres with thousands upon thousands of posts on the ground that need to be driven into the ground to some exact specifications. So Vermeer, understanding that there is a need and that uh, this was kind of a difficult task for a lot of contractors, developed a product that would take a lot of the guesswork and make it a lot more productive and efficient and uh, easier to operate. What's the, uh, the, the source of the need for the accuracy in driving poles in a solar array? Sure. Well, if you look at, at the, the need for accuracy, you need to have the post completely vertical, and you need to have it driven at a, an exact depth. If you look at this, just this, uh, dem this um, array on just behind us, you'll, have to, you'll notice that they want these poles driven at the same, um, at the same height just for the fact that you don't want any shadowing whatsoever on the panel itself. So if you have panels that are, uh, or posts that are uneven, you have a shadow problem. Also, it's a lot more difficult to install the hardware uh, for the actual placement of the panel on the array. Mm -hmm. And you've got, Vermeer's got some customers that are, that are doing this kind of work? Yeah, we're actually in the, in the validation testing part of this, and we've been on a number of solar sites as a, and working. Mm -hmm. uh, actively putting in these posts on the, okay. the jobs. It, how does the machine um, deliver the, the, the plumb that you're looking for, the vertical uh, sure. element? Okay, the, the machine actually has an inclinometer that's placed on the mast itself. Okay. And um, what that basically does is, no matter what kind of terrain you're in, um, it will align the post to be in a comp completely vertical axis from your X and your Y axis. So um, it does it automatically with a push of a button, uh, it senses where it's at in relationship to the ground and, and puts the post in a completely vertical position. How does the machine um, guarantee the, the, the uh, or I should say, I guess, the pole height? Uh... Sure. Yeah. What we have integrated into our control system is actually a laser receiver. And as, a, as the laser beacon is, is spinning around and sending the signal out, as the hammer goes down, uh, that uh, the laser receiver will pick up the signal from the laser and slow the hammer down until it reaches the exact height that, um, that the customer would want that post at and it will stop the hammer automatically. So there's no operator interface whatsoever uh, in achieving that, that direct height. I see. And the way the controls are set up on this machine, I, I understand that, that you've made it pretty simple for a single operator to, to uh, manage the project. That's correct. On all the controls for the machine are located on the joysticks, so you have the mast to move in and out, side to side, the mast tilt left to right, and the mast tilt forward and reverse. Mm -hmm. That can all be done with the two joysticks on the operator station. Now, if for, for some reason, um, that's generally when you see a two-man operation of pretty large beams. When you have smaller beams, we also offer a uh, radio remote control that also controls the machine, all the functions except for the start, and for the start function, uh, can be um, tethered to the operator's neck. Okay. So he can control the whole machine from no, without being on the seat as well. I see. Uh, does the system use a uh, global positioning system for location of individual posts? or? As of right now, we don't have that integrated into our system, but we're looking very heavily at that as being uh, as something that customers are starting to request. Mm -hmm. uh, as we get farther into this project, they uh, definitely see a need for that. Um, some of the issues that we're trying to, to understand is that the tolerances are pretty pretty tight. Um, we want, they don't want to have a lot of tolerance stack up of posts being off a couple inches. They need to be completely in line. And right now, GPS, it's very difficult to guarantee that they can get to that exact specification post after post after post. So how are, how are contractors locating posts? Now. Right, right now, they're, uh, after they, when they survey the job site, they're laying it out. A lot of times they're using a string line. Uh, they're putting uh, carrot tops in the top where the posts are going to be or nails in the ground so that uh, the operators um, you know, can verify where that post needs to be driven. Just for example, on the other side of the post there, we have a little uh, what what's normally used on a lot of the solar sites to, to understand where the contractors or where the crew needs to install the posts. Nice. 
And is it a vibratory hammer or what, how yeah, does it drive it? It is a high frequency vibratory hammer. They're okay. approximately 1500 beats per minute. Mm -hmm. um, so that's actually what's driving um, the post into the ground. And you know, it's basically a float type system. So we're not putting a lot of excessive down pressure on the post when it's going into the ground. Okay, so the hammer's doing all the work. The right, yeah. that's correct. Um, when uh, the, the power uh, utility, the, the, the power plant owner, um, yes writes the specs that he gives to the to the contractor that's driving the posts is he correcting for terrain differences and that sort of thing yeah a lot of this a lot of the sites will be surveyed and there will be do, there are a lot of soil sampling will have been done too so they, they understand if there's a lot of rock rocky subsoil where that may not be the most optimum way of putting the post in um, but you'll have different specifications that will come into play one of the reasons for the depth of the different depths that are driven is different basically due to the soil conditions and also the uplift of the wind. So the posts need to be in the ground so that if there's a, a dramatic wind or a, a high wind speed, that eventually over the years that the array is in existence, those panels don't come up or move whatsoever. Right, right, I see. Yeah. Um, but we look for it to be a pretty robust market in the next two to five years too as the efficiency of solar panels increase. Uh, we see that uh, passing that fulcrum point where it, it really, uh, there's no need for a subsidy and it's commercially viable all by itself. Yeah, I see.